possible, I guess, our, our last session, but uh, let's try. Um, the excuse <laughs> that we give ourselves is that since you will have the slides, you are going to have tons of materials here. Uh, I'm trying to go quick and skip some of them. Uh, but in case you have some questions, I will be around also during lunchtime and I will also uh, leave you my contact details. Uh, so um, I would like to start this super, super quickly because uh, basically nobody knows what Unicre is and Unicre does. How many of you have heard of Unicre before, apart from the people that invited me here? Uh, okay, no, you, okay, no, apart from you, uh, another one, okay. <laughs> okay, that's the reason why I have. Uh, unfortunately, to put a couple of, uh, uh, of slides on what Eurocrit is and does, uh, basically we are um, one of the five research institutes of the United Nations. Uh, we were born, let's say, in New York, but we're based in Italy. Uh, the headquarters is in Turin. It's a very nice place. If you come to visit, uh, please let me know. And uh, it's uh, basically our mandate is everything that relates to uh, crime and justice. Uh, the institute is, uh, as mentioned, is born as a research institute, but we are doing uh, um, uh, what we might call applied research. So um, in all our projects, there is a research component uh, together with some capacity building and technical assistance, as mentioned before. And we cover um, uh, tons of topics from uh, organized crime to terrorism to uh, what I'm personally doing, which is uh, uh, um, uh, leading the unit on uh, um, cybercrime and cybersecurity. Um, before I was, uh, I was chatting and uh, one question was uh, which aspect of cybercrime? It's a very good question. And we got a sort of like evolution. So we started in 2004 when cybercrime was not sexy. Let's be frank about that. So we were like really the, the, the least ones in the, in the institute. Uh, but we were uh, working on uh, hackers profiling. And uh, uh, from, them, from that, we evolved into uh, organized uh, criminal groups uh, in cyberspace. Uh, terrorist use of the internet and uh, in the last uh, five six years we are dealing with projects also uh, related to uh, cyber security and lately misuse of technology um, we do a bunch of projects uh, uh, within uh, for example the european union so funded by the european union and uh, just uh, a, a super quick view but to give you an idea of what we do so we do pure research projects like uh, setting the european research agenda on cyber crime and cyber terrorism for the next years uh, one very technical project that is called security so moving security at the network edge uh, a project that is dealing with cyber but also other topics like e-police which is sort of like predictive policing uh, um, project uh, dealing with cyber crime and the testing case was cyber crime and human trafficking and drug trafficking um, we had a very recent very recent project uh, qualitative research on uh, what's the situation of the small medium enterprises understanding of uh, cyber crime and cyber security issues uh, and we also developed guidelines to force cyber crime out of it uh, very quick, just two upcoming projects. Uh, I, I decided to add this slide because uh, I've heard uh, some of the uh, of the speakers before touching some of the issues. Uh, we're going to launch a new uh, center. Let's say it's called Knowledge Center on Security Implications of Research Innovation. We started with projects related to anti counterfeiting technologies. So the idea is uh, to provide a sort of like neutral platform for member states, so for government at different level, like law enforcement agencies uh, or different ministries uh, and the private sector or the academia, so research groups, uh, to get together and discuss about issues related mostly to security, national and international security. And we would start with two uh, projects. One is cybersecurity for the supply chain, so and the public-private partnership behind it. And uh, we're going to have a, a closer workshop in uh, July on big data analytics for national security, touching different issues like, for example, uh, dealing with uh, uh, big migration flaws uh, and uh, analyzing, thanks to big data analytics, uh, the um, consequences of migration flaws. Uh, on the other hand, there is going to be a part dealing with uh, nuclear safety, and we, I will tell you why in a second. Um, another part that clearly will deal with uh, cybersecurity and big data analytics, but the idea is to bring the concept of big data analytics also to the uh, policymakers' levels, because up to now it's a, it's a quite a known concept uh, within the private sector environment and also 
uh, research groups, uh, but at the government level they are not really understanding the potential and also the possible risk. We're going to have a very interesting session, for example, on which are the risks also of big data, both for uh, data protection and the human rights, but also which are the security risks for uh, big data analytics. Um, I, I just want to leave uh, the, the Unicry side uh, with uh, uh, um, a couple of uh, projects uh, uh, that relates uh, to my talk today. One is that um, a couple of years ago we've been contacted by the um, Agency for the Nuclear Security, so the IEA, something like this, uh, I never know how to pronounce that acronym, but uh, um, uh, we've been dealing, we've been working with them for many years because one part of the institute is dealing with CBRN, so chemical, bacteriological, radionuclear material, uh, the safety of CBRN. And so um, we've been contacted because they wanted to launch the first uh, uh, conference on computer security in nuclear world. And uh, last year we had the event in June. I'm just putting here for you some information so you can check the website. And uh, it was, uh, let's say, an interesting starting point. I, I can say that I'm fully satisfied and I will also tell you why in one second. But um, um, I think it, it, it's important that uh, also computer security in itself and not just as another part of uh, security was discussed also at this high level uh, meeting. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we, uh, we are dealing also with, uh, um, uh, with uh, um, information security at, let's say, uh, critical inf uh, infrastructure facilities, specifically dealing with CBRN uh, material, uh, so we combined uh, the two souls uh, uh, of the institute and uh, within a specific uh, European funded project we develop information security management system series uh, which contains for example best practices for CBRN facilities, guidance for planning information security system, guidance on how to implement information security management controls within the CBRN environment. Uh, but uh, and, and also course materials for information security workshop. Uh, we cooperate with uh, a couple of uh, US based partners and it has been a, a really um, interesting uh, um, experience and, uh, and also it produced, uh, the, the important thing is also that it produced let's say some uh, concrete tools uh, that can be uh, used uh, widely uh, by the information security community specifically dealing with these aspects. Um, why we're here today. Um, there's a reason why I decided to put Squirrel. Do you know why? He's cute. Uh, oh, it's very cute, actually. That, that's a good point. Uh, but uh, there's a reason why. Uh, there was an interesting uh, uh, study. Uh, so basically, the power grid's uh, greatest enemy has four legs and a bushy tail. And that's true. I mean, uh, working on, uh, I've been working on um, uh, critical uh, uh, infrastructure security since 2008, more or less. I remember my first talk on the SCADA system, not sexy at all, but... Uh, um, and for a long time, a lot of experts were saying, and it, it's interesting because they even did a study on this, uh, the common joke in the community is that squirrels uh, uh, have done more damages to power grids than US, China, Iran, Russia, UK combined. And to a certain extent it's true, let's say. Um, and on the other hand, there's the information security community, which is doing the oh my god cyber. Uh, so basically when you put cyber in front of something, then people start panicking. Um, I guess the truth is in the middle. And I will give you a couple of examples. I mean, 20 minutes is really not so much time, but I will uh, give you a couple of uh, like food for thoughts uh, for, uh, for you to think about this topic. Uh, maybe it's not just squirrels. And I was lucky enough, uh, yesterday there was, uh, I don't know if you are following, but uh, there was a nuclear, a German nuclear power plant infected with computer viruses. And uh, uh, there's a very interesting article this morning uh, uh, on Motherboard, uh, why we should be worried about ancient viruses infecting power plants. It's touching two very interesting issues. Uh, uh, the two very interesting issues are, uh, first of all, we don't have to think always about new threats, but these are pretty old uh, viruses. One is called the Remnant, and the other one is Configure. I had Configure, I think it was in 2010 or something like that. So, I mean, it's not always new uh, um, uh, type of threats. And on the other hand, 
Um, there's this myth, for example, that nuclear power plants are always uh, uh, air gap protected. But it's not true. There, an interesting part of that article was saying, I mean, how many people, for example, for charging their phone, they plug uh, the USB, for example, in, in, in computers. And it's a, it's a sort of like open door uh, for various intrusions. Um, the idea, I mean, I will leave you, I don't know if you are familiar with this commercial, but it's very nice. I don't have the time to, to show it to you, but um, just check it, because it gives a clear idea of why we should be worried, let's say, about uh, um, uh, industrial systems, more specifically. Um, it's difficult to cover all the broad range of uh, critical infrastructures. Uh, um, I, I, I decided to put some, co some definitions uh, uh, on one hand, because lawyers love definitions, I'm sorry, but on the other hand, it's also because definitions help understanding and getting a common understanding of what we are talking about, which is one of the biggest challenges that we have in the cybercrime environment. There was a very good question before about hackers' forums, what we call hackers. We can discuss here forever, I guess, and also the problem is that different countries have different legislations, so what you criminalize, what you don't criminalize, and so on and so forth. It's not just lawyers. Uh, I mean, thinking, but it's also the problem that how you compare, for example, data coming from different countries that have different uh, uh, way to collect information on this, and also they have a different understanding of what a threat is. And that's the same problem that we have on critical infrastructure. And critical infrastructure, I mean, we have a second level problem, which is that the knowledge and awareness on this topic is not that high. Uh, so it's a sort of like a small community within uh, the community. Um, when we talk about critical infrastructure, we uh, talk specifically about the, what they are called cyber physical systems. I guess most of the audience are, is familiar with the, uh, with the topic and I, I think it's a very good definition because uh, uh, they represent the melting point, let's say, between physical and, and cyber worlds. So, uh, two uh, big examples, uh, an easy example to understand is the Internet of Things. I know that you're going to talk about it, so I'm going to go super quick, and smart cities, for example. Uh, everybody is crazy now about smart cities, but my question is always uh, how secure, well, how smart the citizens will be, which is one point, and the second point is uh, how secure smart cities can be. Um, critical infrastructure is basically, and, and, and CPS are basically uh, covering everything we can think about to provide goods and services to our, to our countries. So it's very interesting because uh, I don't know how much was explored the topic, but there's a, uh, let's say, um, a, a strict relation between the public and the private partnership, and specifically to tackle these issues. Um, I just want to give, leave you with two uh, main concepts. One concept is, uh, I'm very glad that finally, um, I don't know if you're familiar with this tool, it's uh, the World Economic Forum Global Risk Landscape. It's not very accurate, but the, the good thing is that it's uh, providing, it's putting, let's say, different uh, risk uh, that nations are facing uh, in, uh, in a sort of like global scheme and you might see the link among them. It was good because I think it was in 2014 that cyber appeared in the, in the landscape. And, um, and from the, the last one, there's uh, the critical information infrastructure break breakdown. It's considered one of the highest risks. Um, as I mentioned, threats are very difficult to estimate. There are some resources that are good, better, let's say, than others. Uh, I give you the European experience, which is this one, the ENISA threat landscape. It's very good, and I want to leave you, let's say, with this message, because um, as mentioned, I mean, I know that there are many private sector vendors in the, in the room, and uh, I wouldn't be able to do my work without them. On the other hand, uh, it's also true that every time that there's, uh, you know, big headlines about, uh, I mean, uh, how much cybercrime costs and this kind of thing, so you always need to be extremely careful in reading the source of the information and reading the methodology of the report and so on and so forth, both for the private and for the public sector. The, pri the private sector might have a vested interest clearly in the report. So the good thing that this tool does is that uh, they are working more on trends more than numbers. And they are, for example, uh, putting sort of like top threats for one year, top threats for the other year. The trend, uh, I mean, uh, are they decreasing, increasing? And there's a specific part that is dealing with threat to, to CPS and still malware, so the old friend, as mentioned to you before, um, is, uh, is uh, the, the big elephant in the room. Um, I leave you with 
the, the issue of uh, that there are not so many um, common malware for uh, ICS. Um, so the first uh, uh, very known one was Taxnet, then we have the Havex one, and then uh, the Black Energy 2, uh, which is uh, pretty famous because uh, uh, it was uh, recently also debated uh, in, a, in a big case. I just want to leave you with this. Uh, one of the biggest cases that we, we, uh, we have heard of uh, recently was the Ukraine case. How many of you have heard of it? Okay, so I can go very quick on this. So basically, after Stuxnet, there was sort of like, I mean, continuous discussion within the security community, uh, but not, let's say, huge incidents that we know of. Okay, so let's put this caveat first. Uh, the, the Ukraine um, uh, case is interesting uh, because basically what happened was that hackers successfully infiltrated the SCADA system of two, possibly more, uh, Ukraine power distribution companies uh, through the probable use of the Black Energy Trojan, a sort of like sophisticated version, so advanced version, and likely uh, via two very basic, me basic uh, uh, means, such so as per phishing or social engineering. Um, the, it, it's kind of like uh, an interesting, complicated system, uh, but on the other hand, uh, the uh, interesting part is clearly the uh, political attachment and allegations that are uh, related to this. Uh, but also there are some uh, interesting aspects of the case. So for example, the attack was planned approximately six months in advance. Uh, it took uh, quite some time to discover the attack. And uh, uh, also the, uh, the, the one of the problems that we see often in critical infrastructure is that the, since the, sometimes they don't have adequate, for example, uh, digital forensic policies in place and uh, uh, good, uh, let's say, monitoring system in place, so specifically regarding to uh, cyber intrusions, it's very difficult then to reconstruct uh, what happened. So, uh, coming back to, the, uh, to my first uh, slide, it's not just squirrels, okay? Uh, but on the other hand, it's extremely important to have uh, more meetings like, uh, like this one to uh, uh, discuss. Um, and especially a lot with policymakers, I'm sorry to say, because the techies are pretty uh, well acquainted with these topics, but uh, we, we really need to have more uh, sessions where we have techies and policymakers together in a better understanding uh, the issues that we're discussing today. Uh, thanks a lot. These are my contacts, so please feel free to contact me. Thank you.